India would produce a nuclear system that would fuel her growth far into the future. Ever since 1985, scientists at the Atomic Research Facility, the Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research in Kalpakam, have been striving to perfect the fast breeder cycle. For over 20 years, Indian scientists have fine-tuned the numerous technologies they have developed before finally achieving results that would allow them to begin work on the real-life, full-fledged fast breeder reactor. And that's what this construction work is all about. After years of research, India's first full-fledged commercial fast breeder reactor, the first of a large family of these reactors that has been planned, has begun taking shape. The project is so important to India's energy future that 3,400 crore rupees is being pumped into it. But there is also a plan to make this a commercially viable enterprise, as the technology and the electricity can then be sold. A new company named Bharatiya Nabikya Vidyut Nigam Limited, or Bhavani for short, was created in October 2003. It will aim to patent the fast breeder technology and the various processes and then sell them along with the Indian made fuel. <laughs> And so India has entered phase two of its three-stage nuclear cycle with a prototype fast breeder reactor. Once this fast breeder is up and running, the Department of Atomic Energy will construct a family of these reactors that will in turn spawn successive generations of similar reactors. Have you ever wondered what lies within one of those huge nuclear domes that you see? Well, it's a vessel very much like this main vessel that's being built here, made of stainless steel which will finally weigh about 140 tons and contain all the four critical elements of the nuclear reactor. This is the main safety vessel of the reactor core which is being pieced together. <laughs> This looks like a very huge structure when it gets put together. Yes. What is the weight of this structure going to be like? Total 115 ton is the uh, weight of uh, safety vessel. Okay. And how many such panels go into making this entire safety vessel? So this is around 29 petals are there for the distance. Then there are three shell courses. So each shell course is made of six segments. So this and each of these have to be fitted together like a big yes. jigsaw puzzle. It has yes. to be welded. It has to be welded. And during welding, a lot of distortion occurs. As Mr. Tati informed that, uh, stainless steel is very peculiar uh, and is very prone to distortion because of uh, very low thermal conductivity and high coefficient of linear expansion as compared to carbon steel and other low light steel material. So it's a really challenge for us. Ice is what sank the Titanic. But here in Kalpakkam at the fast breeder reactor, about 8,000 tons of ice have already been used in the construction of the concrete raft on which the entire nuclear complex will sit. This was to prevent the formation of micro fissures as the concrete gradually set, thereby making the base extremely strong. Critics of India's nuclear program have pointed to the danger of accidents in the reactors, especially so the fast breeder reactor that would use fuel containing plutonium, which is 30,000 times more radioactive than uranium-235, which is used in heavy water reactors. And one of the main challenges involved in building a concrete base for a nuclear reactor is that it needs to have a grade of strength that is almost double that which is needed for building a skyscraper. The base must be strong enough to withstand a nuclear meltdown in the event of an accident at the reactor complex, or an earthquake, or for that matter, another tsunami from the Bay of Bengal. The concrete base in the case of this fast breeder reactor also needs to be completely waterproof, as the entire nuclear machinery in the core of the reactor 
is swimming in an extremely hot pool of liquid sodium, which would react violently if it came in contact with moisture. This is what people here refer to as the ice box. Imagine this room full of ice falling from the skies above, almost literally. Philip and is having a capacity of 50,000 liters to chill per day. And we are having uh, two ice plants which is having a capacity to produce 50 tons per day. And then we are having a storage room here of 50, uh, 350 tons per day. Like in the walls all around, the floor too has a thermocol lining, which keeps this ice perpetually frozen. That still, it is pushed through this ice conveyor, where it's mixed with cement before being set into the concrete structure of the nuclear reactor. A few records have also been set during the construction of this concrete raft like the time when 46,400 bags of cement were used along with 600 metric tons of ice in a continuous pour that lasted 110 hours during the construction of the raft. That's 5,800 cubic meters of concrete being set in one straight go. But perhaps one of the most amazing feats of engineering here is the fact that in this huge reactor complex that will house nine interconnected buildings, there are 4,950 embedded parts that have been placed with an accuracy of just one millimeter. The reactor complex is unique in itself, with eight different buildings including the reactor core to be constructed and finally integrated on the same concrete base. Right in the center of the entire complex sits the reactor building, with the reactor core at its center. This essentially is the heart of the reactor, where uranium and plutonium is bombarded with neutrons, producing great amounts of heat. This heat is transferred away from the reactor core by a liquid sodium cooling system at a searing temperature of 547 degrees centigrade. This energy in the form of heat is transferred to steam generators and this eventually produces electricity. To the south of the reactor building lies the control room from where every function in the entire reactor complex is controlled. Flanking this control room are the electrical complexes of the nuclear plant. To the north of the reactor core lies the fuel storage building, where fresh fuel plins comprising a mixed fuel of uranium and plutonium are stored for easy access through remotely operated machines. These fresh fuel pins stored here will replace the fuel pins in the reactor core once the fuel in them is exhausted. By the time it is scheduled to go critical in 2010, the prototype fast feeder reactor is expected to generate electricity at a cost of 3 rupees 20 paise per unit, much cheaper than oil or coal based electricity. But not everything can be controlled by man, and nature can be the most unpredictable and the most destructive. Tragedy struck here on the morning of December 26, 2004, when giant tsunami waves from the open sea came crashing down on 400 workers in the fast breeder complex here. And the day this struck, Mr. D. R. K. Nair of Gammon, who is construction in charge from Gammon side, he had a walkie talkie in his hand. Five people had walkie talkie in their hands. Inside the pit, he could wash on them, the water is gushing in. He said, Pani bhago, pani bhago, pani bhago, and all the people started jumping on the reinforcement and they could stay to the light, their light. Mr. Nair kept on standing till he saw everybody is rescued to safety and nobody is stuck in the pit. 
Fortunately, there was a spigoted pit for the diesel generator building and also hot and steer. And wa water first filled there and then only overflow through to the main pit. And this resulted in saving of the 150 lives. But like the ancient ruins not far away, the project has survived the tsunami. And scientists hope that like the 7th century Panchagathas of Mahabalipuram, dedicated to the Pandavas, this too will stand firm against the test of time. And as history turns a full circle, maybe this reactor is one more step in the emergence of a strong India, taking on the world's superpower on its own terms. In September 2010, when the fast breeder reactor goes critical, India will have launched itself into a new era of strategic and energy security. From here to the future, from ground zero at Kalpakkam with Ajmal Jami, this is Royden D'Souza for NDTV.